I want you to appreciate sometimes how many takes it is to film after waiting all day and being patient. Um, a family has moved in over here and their kids are having a great time this evening. And I have finally set up a table with a lamp with a power source being this. And the mosquito bugs have come back because now we're in a wind shelter. And the tablet's finally ready. And I'm losing light. And the bugs are attacking me. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you, sometimes you, you really feel like everything's going against you. It's like, oh well. Sometimes you literally have to lock yourself in your truck. <laughs> oh, bless that family. When you look down, do you see a belly or your shoes? Right? Do you see that or your shoes? No, no, no. Don't don't mistake me being here with a fever, even if I look kind of hot. It's because I've been cooking this all day. I've had to figure out how to explain a complex thing in simple terms. That is the tool that you're going to leave with about your microbiome. You know, this thing down here. Welcome back to a beautiful day for leaving Scotomaville. One of my favorite lines from the movie Secondhand Lions goes like this. Everyone needs something to believe in, even if it's not true. Let me give you an example. Fat, eating fat, makes you fat. Wrong. It's not true. For decades, we've had low fat this and low fat that and non fat this and that. F eating fat does not make you fat. Look into ketogenics. You have to have a decent amount of fat in your diet to train your body to use fat <laughs> rather than just store it. So everyone needs something to believe in, even if it's not true. I'm not into conspiracy theories, but I'm going to give you one. One bad actor is a hundred trillion microbes. Yeah. I'm only 10% human. I'm 90% microbe. And they conspire against me. They form the little focus groups and they go, we want pizza, we want ice cream, we want crap food, feed us now, burgers and fries. And if you give in to them, they grow their culture. They grow their community and their voice is bigger. It overrides the second bad actor. That one's right here. It's called your prefrontal cortex, which accompanies your amygdalas, two little almond shaped parts of your brain right inside of, right back in there. Your black box of emotions. This is your will. This is your history. This whole thing gets persuaded through the vagus nerve to those hundred trillion microbes, a large part are in your gut. So when you put stuff in your mouth that tastes good, that's been sold to you to be good for you, low fat, this or that, whatever it is, you end up fueling the conspiracy, fueling this tidal wave against your wellness. So the way to find out if you're losing that battle, do you have a gut? When you look down, do you see your belly or your shoes? That's a really easy test of it. The third actor is your circadian rhythm. That's the daily cycle 
of your hormones and sleep and basically the habits that you have and the time schedule that you set things on. You can adjust that, but if you're unaware that you even have it, it's one of the silent conspirators, a fourth actor, stress. Stress affects your cortisol, which ends up as belly fat. It's something you can manage, but it's not an easy one. It's not easy because it's driven by those other conspirators. It's driven by your emotions, by your habits, by your circadian rhythms, by what you choose as your coping mechanisms to put into the game, to fuel the whole mix. So coming into equilibrium, creating a decent, healthy balance that results in longevity starts with this process of being aware. Oh, here are these different components that I can mess with. Here are things that you have direct control over, tools that you can manipulate and use to adjust. The food you eat, the exercise you get, the amount of sleep you get, and the way you deal with stress. Those are four different handles on this tool that you can adjust your illness or your wellness and watch it drop. Your sleep you can directly affect by just being aware of when you take in things like caffeine or the blue lights that you're around late at night, your devices that you're staring at, right? Also, the job that you have or the work that you do. If you're self-employed and you're an entrepreneur, you have no excuse. It's you are your boss. Stop being a tyrant. Start treating your employee and your factory with insignificance. Treat it with, as the most valuable thing that you possess. How about your cravings? Everyone needs something to believe in, even if it's not true. Your cravings are not always the best thing for you. Here's a scotoma. If you have belly fat, it's a great indicator that you have a fatty liver, which means it's backed up. It's got a traffic jam. It can't be functioning for you, which means you're gonna get inflammation in your gut. That means you can quite easily develop a leaky gut where the microbes and other crap gets into your blood system. Then what? It goes and finds another organ. Then what do you do? You have a symptom. So you go to the doctor who gives you a pill to mask the symptom, not to fix the leaky gut, the problem is you're not addressing the problem, right? There's the scotoma. I have done this for the last, I don't know, I can't even remember, more than a de decade. What I do each day to feed my microbes, these are chunks of uh, fruit that we've had from fresh papaya and pineapple and mango and banana that I've chopped up, thrown in the freezer, and always have those on hand. To that, I add... This is a Garden of Life raw organic meal. I, I'm not endorsing the product. I am simply trying to show you that this is sprouted. It's all organic and absolutely fabulous mix of things to feed your microbe garden to build the culture. So I put a good scoop of that. And this is like feeding your guppies in your fish tank or the animals in your farm to the one that's most important i believe is um this broken cell wall corella or spirulina this is a single cell powder um like wheatgrass powder and talk about absolutely dense you, this is the most incredibly good so I put two big scoops. Now it smells like alfalfa in your barn. 
And if you add spirulina to it, that's a seaweed based um, single cell. So it really is uh, something that's an acquired taste, but chopped fresh ginger root that I've already cut up. But you can literally feel in your gut and your brain the difference when you have this. To that, I put a bunch of distilled water and uh, cheers. My recommendation is feed your gut. Put some microbe food in there. Simple scotoma. If the food won't rot on the counter, don't put it in your mouth. It's only got six to eight hours before it's out of you. If it won't rot in six to eight hours, you won't digest it. And you're not what you eat. You are what you digest. You know, yeah, I'm walking. It's kind of steep. But I'm thinking about everything that we put in us. The water, the food, the thoughts. We're in control of all of that. And we might live in a digital age where I can record stuff like this, which is awesome. But we still have biological houses, meaning we still have to design our life to fit the biology that we've been given. So those end up being choices that we make, like to get out and exercise every day. And to eat and sleep when it's best in our circadian rhythms. So try a few things. Adjust your sleep cycle. Change some of your diet. Put your exercise at a time that can be well managed. And start working on those thoughts that tell the rest of your community and culture that you're the boss. Not them. Don't be subservient to the bugs. Ugh, no. <laughs> Don't be subservient to just a hundred trillion microbes. That 100 trillion microbes? Oh yeah, like this one crawling on me right now. crawling in my ear. Oh, here are these different components that I can mess with. Like I can scratch where those bugs are crawling up my leg while I'm shooting. There's the scotoma. Looking at what is the root cause. The flies that are drafting on the camera. It's a good little vortice right here for them to that's one. You have to treat them like that. Sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. I want you to take up a new little mantra. A hundred trillion little microbes singing. We want kimchi. We want corella. You teach them that. And they'll listen.